Cards these days are a bit pricey. It can make you feel a bit like you did back when you realized those Pokemon cards you gave away a couple, two, three years ago are now apparently worth $10,000 because of some unknown reason. I know the reason. He's got blonde hair and he's in Fight Club these days, but for some reason, things he touches get really popular. I'm gonna slap you in the face with a fish, bro. But I mean, come on. It's like the next generation tops baseball cards, okay? Make baseball cards valuable again. Guys, please, I'm begging you, please make baseball cards cool again. I swear I have them and I swear they're, oh God. I swear they're valuable. Oh God, I gotta clean all this up. <laughs> but hey, you know, what can you do? Your first car is probably not worth $30,000. And it can make you feel a little bit sad, okay? Don't be sad, get glad. New bag lot, zipper bags. I still remember that commercial from when I was like 10. Don't you just hate fighting with your plastic wrap? <laughs> I'm... You good, Tommy? I'm Alex, Alex Martini with two underscores at the end. And today, instead of making you feel bad about letting cars go that are worth their weight in gold these days, we're gonna be talking about cars that are 140% going to skyrocket in value. There might be other videos out there that have the same exact title, so please, for the love of God, I'll try and figure out a different name that are going to skyrocket tour in value, which will make those that are looking for a car happy, except now we're talking about them, which is probably gonna make some people mad, but oh well. Every single time we used to talk about a vehicle getting popular, people got really mad at us, but it was fun because I get to go find new cars that nobody knows about. If you could though, do me a solid and subscribe so I can keep making videos because that TikTok creator fund is giving me like 16 cents. Hi, I'm poor. A little bit depresso espresso, and I just want to keep growing the YouTube. And of course, don't forget to drop a comment below. I'm responding to every single comment on YouTube. We're finally dropping some apparel for you to pick up, which you can check in the description link below. Sorry that it took so long. It's been a little bit busy and trying to just make content and not fall asleep all the time. And if you do check out the website, you can enter in your email and get you first dibs on limited drops because we're only doing exclusive drops for a little bit, which is pretty dope. I'll give you a hint. For this video, we're gonna focus on attainable cars to pick up right now, because I'm not gonna talk about quarter million dollar cars. Now, if you do happen to have $200,000 sitting in your bank account right now, go grab a 997.1 or .2, get a GT3 RS if you can, and you'll thank me in a few years. I pinky, pinky, pinky promise you, okay? We're talking about cars though in this video that you could reasonably snag up right now that are more so unknown than they are expensive. And I am also gonna talk about maybe a SUV, all right? Don't get me too angry. Now, don't be too angry, okay? Also, you can comment what car you think will skyrocket in value in the comments, because then you can make everybody mad, because hopefully people are thinking that their car won't get mentioned, and we're gonna mention it. The first car is quite easily the Volvo V70 Rs. It's unveiled in 1997. The V70 R was a high performance version of the V70. Now, what made this vehicle special wasn't the fact, okay, that it came in six beautiful optional colors that are actually look pretty damn good. It wasn't the fact that you could get this thing in a five speed manual or that you could get it in an all wheel drive or front wheel drive fashion. Oh no, it wasn't that. It was the fact that you could get 247 horsepower and 258 foot pounds of torque with a limited slip differential if it was in the front wheel drive configuration. This thing was fast. It was a go getter when it came out. It was the fact that you could go with like and have rear vented disc brakes from the factory. You could get these in a two tone design with interior Alcantara, all right? This car wow, was ahead of its time. It was so good, you couldn't even imagine driving it, okay? The second generation would come in at 300 horsepower, almost 295 foot-pounds of torque. That's a sub six second, zero to 60, that you could get in a wagon. The second generation came in with a six-speed manual, it came with Brembo stock brakes, and even had the nickname, the Man Wagon. That's such a good name because it lured speed crazy guys with kids. All right, I absolutely love wagons. I think they're the best. I don't care if they're shoebox wagons. I don't care if they're sleek wagons, big wagons, heavy wagons, small wagons. I'm an equal wagon connoisseur of sorts. And if you don't like wagons, you're just gonna need to get out, okay? Nowadays, you don't see too many people talking about Volvo for some reason. I don't know if that's because they're not as sharp edged as everything else or the fact that TikTok just hasn't picked up on them yet. But Volvos are sick. And for some reason, it's leaving a lot on the table and opportunity for this platform if you are looking for something that's a turbocharged speed wagon. It's one of the only wagons left too that is like a performance focused driving experience. It's not a million dollars. And they also came in a boxy design from the first and second generation. In my opinion, they age super well. I think you can pick them up for a pretty good price, right around eight to $10,000 if you look in your local area. And a lot of times you're gonna get them from older individuals that knew that it was a performance wagon or you're gonna get it from a rich grandmother that had no idea what they were buying. 
Once people start to realize like this is a pretty good one, I have a really good feeling that this is gonna be like a $35,000 car in a couple of years. Damn! Damn! They also carry a good chunk of history. Volvos are good cars. Nobody talks bad about Volvos. Volvo used to make great cars. I had an aunt that had a P1800. She had over a million miles on it, I think. A car that's on the cusp of getting the old inflation lift and popularity bump is probably the Toyota MR2, but I still think it deserves a spot in this discussion, specifically the SW20 or the second generation. For those that don't know, the Toyota MR2, specifically the first and second generation, we don't talk about the third. That big eye ball boy needs to go somewhere else. Okay, the first and second generation were fantastically fun cars. They were mid-engine, they were rear-wheel drive, they were a sports car manufactured in Japan, but marketed globally. It was a simple car too, it was a Toyota which you know they're gonna do what they have to to make sure it actually stays alive. And with the first generation getting help from Lotus engineers like Roger Becker, it only had about 122 horsepower, but every horsepower was put to good use. You'd get a supercharged version if you really wanted to in the 90s, but really the SW20 was the poor man's Ferrari and the one that I would highly recommend you take a peek at. The MR2 Turbo that would come out would produce right around 200 horsepower and 200 foot-pounds of torque and a five-speed manual transmission. <clears throat> it was a tiny car, it was really light, especially later in the generations because they fixed some of their weight. You get staggered wheels, it had a stronger gearbox, you had a little bit of wider arch, and a lot of times you got a twin piston brake caliper and it had a 6.1 second zero to 60 with a 14 second quarter mile. All that to tell you that it's quick, it's spirited, but the driving experience felt like you were just on rails. What made this car though truly special was that it came at the peak of the Japanese tuner companies that were getting involved with factories. Companies like Blitz, HKX, and Phoenix Power are some of the few that I think if you can get a period correct SW20, oh, that means that if you look around hard enough though, you will find some pretty rare builds available for import or here in the States. It was a car that in my opinion and in the opinion of a lot of people that are probably dead now that rivaled the NSX and it had enough scare factor that it became known as the car for snap oversteer that many people would ultimately claim was one of the most dangerous cars you could drive right next to the Porsche Widowmaker. It's a fun car and it rightfully puts you in your place and they're not all that expensive. But why this car will go up in price is because of what it is. And when you realize there's nothing really else out there that meets this criteria, it's mid-engine, it's rear-wheel drive, it's a Toyota, it's a two-seater, it's reliable, has a solid power plant that can take a ton of modifications and came in at the peak of Japanese tuning. There is not another car with any of those things like under $60,000 anymore. And that's why these cars are a solid one to pick up. I really do think this is like the crown jewel. If I had another car garage, there would be an SW20 sitting in it and I would just never let it go. Now, we always think about cars and now that's there's nothing wrong with that, okay? Because we're mostly car people. But there are a few dailies that deserve some love too. And the number one worthy SUV that should be on this list is the N180 series Toyota 4Runner. I know. Seems like everybody these days is picking up 4Runners for some reason. Everybody loves the truck that looks like a car. Now this generation 4Runner though came with an all new chassis and a massive redesign that kind of brought it later into the competition. It kind of fixed a lot of stuff. You can get it with an improved engine option like the 3.4 liter V6. In addition to the larger body, longer wheelbase, you end up getting ABS, you got a lift up tailgate, coil spring suspension, and you get some good off-road goodies to help you as well because that's what a lot of car enthusiasts seem to be building their dailies after. Like they're gonna go off road. Sometimes they do, more of just like a camping getaway vehicle. Although you have to stay away from the rust that sometimes plagues these platforms, their body on frame construction gives fantastic clearance and just enough oomph that these vehicles will carry the family, some spare stuff, and has enough of it to do enough off-road lifestyle stuff that most car guys are finding themselves doing these days. I see a lot of people that are keeping their fun summer cars in the garage and they're getting a daily that just happens to usually be a Toyota 4Runner, an FJ, or some sort of Land Cruiser if they're rich. The reason why these SUVs though will inevitably go up in price is because of two reasons. One, it's meeting the threshold of the 90s nostalgia that a lot of people are digging these days that need an SUV. And two, it's a vehicle that helps accomplish the off-road lifestyle that is booming in popularity right now. For some reason, we all wanna go outside. It's almost like there was a global pandemic that made us stay inside. Now for some reason we wanna go outside and in the past it was scary and now people wanna just like live out there. And three, I don't even know if I said two or three, lasts a good long while. 
It hasn't blown up in price, like the newer generations. The 4Runner is an expensive thing to jump into these days, but this 4Runner's generation, in my eyes, is like the official transfer vehicle for any car enthusiast that inevitably needs to buy something that doesn't have a turbo, but still isn't a truck, because trucks are sometimes ugly, expensive, and rust really easy. And this one is probably a pretty good find. And last but not least, which is an odd one, but I think this one is one of those gut feelings that sometimes I'm super right about, and sometimes I just hope nobody ever pulls this up in a couple years. I'm gonna say the Volkswagen Corrado, the SLC, the VR6, or pretty much any VR6 from that generation. The Corrado was an odd car. If you see it, you know what I'm talking about. It had three doors, it was front engine, it was wedgy looking, front wheel drift lift back design that was only made for seven years and there was a little under 100,000 ever made, which is actually a pretty good chunk of change, okay? And while it is based on the A2 or the, the Mark II platform and the Golf of the Jetta, the VR6 utilizes the A3 suspension components, which resulted in a wider wheel track, wider arches, an automatic rear spoiler, and either the 2.8 liter, which was a 179 horsepower motor, or if you're lucky enough to get the Eurospec version because you want to be fancy, you get a 2.9 liter producing 187 horsepower. The SLC, for those that care, stands for Sport Luxury Coupe. And when it was released, it was listed as one of the top 25 cars you must drive before you die. In fact, there's a company way back in the day called Auto Express that timed it as one of the best Volkswagen driver's car ever released. And it is a fun car. My friend actually had one for a while. You can snag them for under $10,000. And they're a quirky, fun, period correct, just enjoyable car to get in. And if you look carefully enough, you will find them in random places. But I really don't think that's gonna last long. Volkswagens have this odd ability to spike in price, kind of like Porsches do, depending on trim and who owns them. And it's only a matter of time before people start to figure out that a lowered VR6 on some like Ronal teddy bear wheels and a good clean exhaust, please don't get the teddy bear wheels. <laughs> But with an exhaust, is one of the best Sunday cruisers out there. And if you're a lover of this body style, you're gonna have a good time. I could probably bet this is gonna be a 35 to 45 thousand dollar car by like 2024. I'm calling it now, all right? But what do you think is a car that'll go up in value? Drop a comment below and let me know because I am responding to every single comment out there. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please don't forget to subscribe. That is the whole plug. I know it, but it would mean a lot. Check out alexmartini.net. I'm Alex.martini with two underscores at the end, and we will see you later. Adios.